All right, with that, we're back at it. Thank you for clicking the link, coming over, hanging out. We have some PlayStation related content today. We are cleaning out a PlayStation 4 Pro along with an announcement somewhere in the video as long as I remember to announce, which I should. Let's get started. So pick up the PlayStation, check the back. You will see your two warranty stickers. We shouldn't need to remove this one, just the center one in order to get our Torx screw out. And we need to find a Torx driver that fits it. So let's do that. I'm not sure it might be T9. I really can't remember. Anyhow, the quick and easy way to get some, get that out is with a razor blade or a set of tweezers. So we'll try those. All right, we're going to leave it partially stuck. And we'll pull this safety screw or security screw out. It is a Torx, but it has the central part to it. And I believe there is not one under there, but we'll check. I don't know about every revision of this console. Okay, so there is one here. Some of them have a screw here. Some of them don't. So... I suppose it is worth checking. I know the last PS4 that I worked on did not have a screw there. And finally, we can attempt to pop this out. With that little cover for the hard drive gone, you can now get a Phillips screwdriver and take out the big black screw holding your hard drive in. Yeah, it's in the front. Sorry. So, if you pick up on the two front corners and wiggle it, work your way toward the back, the top will come off. We have a few Torx screws to take out. Let's go ahead and do that. T9 just barely fits, and you may strip some of the heads out, so rewind on that screw that I said, screw size I said to go ahead and use. We're going to flip this over. You have a screw right by where the hard drive came out. After that, the rest of the console, this bottom should pop off fairly easy. And work on pulling, lifting up as well as sliding it this way towards you all right we can see quite a bit of dust as well as the dust inside the top and bottom cover that's what we're doing here is cleaning out this machine internally we're gonna have quite a few screws to take out although not as many as some consoles that have been inside as far as i know in my experience there's going to be two types of screws you're going to have coarse threaded screws and then machine screws and you can see what screw goes to where so you don't have to go around and draw marks all over the machine coarse threaded screws will thread into plastic machine th uh, machine screws will thread through metal you won't have a need to undo your little wi-fi bracket here we're going to work around that the reason this machine was brought in is the customer had it and said it just it's starting to ramp the fan up and make noise. So we're going to replace the thermal paste and clean out all of the dust internally. We're going to get all of our Torx screws out and then we'll switch over to Phillips. I believe that is it unless I missed some. Let's go for the Phillips now. We're going to have a number machine screws that are Phillips to take out. Also, depending on what model you may be working on, will depend on the location of the screws. And you may have some silver 
and some black machine screws. All right, grab your tweezers. We need to go and pull a bunch of ribbon cables. All of them here, 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 and here all pull out. This one is a latch. You need to flip the little latch up. Doesn't take much pressure, and then you can extract this, and then flip your latch back down. Then you have a few antenna wires to unclip. Be careful pulling them off. Sometimes they don't like to come off. And they will want to rip the connector off, but just try to lift up. Instead of prying to the side, try to lift a little and then like lift slightly like you're lifting it off sideways and then straight up. And it should come loose. You want to move your one Wi-Fi antenna out of the way. You can unclip it out front here to help get it out of the way. This one, you can bend down over it. And this one, you can just literally pull over out of the way. This one, you have to go back a little further and undo it from the case here. And you can bend it off to the side. And then finally, you have your fan plugged in here, which you, if you have some tweezers, you should be able to get it to start out by putting the points of your tweezers in this slot right here. And with that, I think we're free now. Are we free to lift up? We should be. I might have lied. I might have lied about it all. Did I miss a screw? I really feel like I missed a screw at this point. I did. There's one right here. Okay. That's out. We have this plate here that we need to take out. We also have the power supply side that we have to extract from it, the power supply. And as far as I know, none of these screws are holding that power supply in. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over now and work on getting our power supply out of this unit. Some of them, it, they're just stuck more so than the others. There we go. When you lift it up, be careful. Now, this one plugs in in a weird spot here. You can unplug it from here or from the board. I always prefer to unplug from the board. We're going to blow this out as well. There is quite a bit of dust build up. In there, so we're gonna make sure to blow that out pretty thoroughly. Let's flip this back over. And we're going to go around and take this plate off here. This is where we're starting to get into trouble. So we want to pay attention to what we're doing. We're going to keep. I don't believe these screws are any different than the first Phillips we took out. They don't appear different. But all the same, I'm going to keep them separate in this little cup that I have here. So the ones around this plate, I'm keeping separate. little ram silicon pads we're going to keep them there now we have to pull off this x clamp and i believe at this point if we start lifting up yes our board will be free definitely dry thermal paste and not a lot we'll go ahead and we're going to brush it off of our cpu with our brush with heat sink heat shrink around it this uh vinyl brush just is very good at picking up dried up let's see how dry it is yeah okay so that come came off in a whole chunk that's fairly dry thermal paste we're going to pick off the couple big pieces that we can now They're probably told you want to be careful not to hit any of the capacitors, resistors, uh, timer chips, whatever they may be around our APU there. 
We're just going to literally take this and brush, and as we brush, it will start clumping up in the brush. And it's fairly clean, but we're going to hit it with some IPA to clean it up the rest of the way. We have a few more screws to take out. All right, we got, look at this, look at this mess. Look at that wreck. No wonder this thing was heating up. So that is a thoroughly clogged PlayStation 4 fin stack. We're going to brush all this dirt off here quick. We're going to pull our fan out and clean it as well. Uh, we may do this in a two-parter. But it'll be combined into one so you'll never know the difference. You'll never be able to tell. We won't admit to it either if you question. If you question me, I'm not going to admit to it. You won't even get the truth from Flat Earth Santa. Try it. Ask him. Dirty, dirty fan. We're going for the air compressor quick here. All right. The parts are clean. We're going to conclude it here. Take a small break. It's always good to take a break when you're working, whether you're standing or sitting. If you're sitting, stand up. If you've been standing, take a moment to sit down. We're going to do just that, and we'll be back to reassemble this shortly. And here we are to do the continuation of the PS4. So let's jump right in without waiting too much. We're going to replace the silicone, silicon, silicone, however you want to say it, the silicon pads that go across there, which are these ones. I have some of the same thickness here. We're going to go ahead and cut those. All right, yeah, they're in the right spot. We need to thread these in. These are the two culprits. They go in the top and bottom here. I I can't confirm whether or not anybody's been in this console seeing how you can buy the warranty stickers online. But as far as I can tell, nobody has been. All the other stickers, or yeah, all the other screws seem like they're lining up, so we'll go ahead and put these in. Another thing to pay attention to is if you try to spin this, it will still screw down, but this plate is going to be offset from the X clamp and everything. Like, you, it, yeah. you're going to be running into stuff if you try and put it on this way, and that's not how it goes on the board. It'll actually go that way. That's where the holes are through the actual circuit board. These ones can be finicky getting in, just take your time. You don't want to cross thread them. Alright, give them a good little twist going down. We should be good to go at that point. Let's get our board in here. Alright, we need to flip this over. We have our silicon pads in place. We need to, when we put this in, we need to ensure that we're not trapping our Wi-Fi antennas. We'll move, and all of our ribbon cables need to stay out of the way. We don't want to trap them between the, this, the board and this layer. So let's set this down. We're going to put the perfect, perfect amount of thermal paste on our APU. And that should be it. We'll stop it a little ways from each end. It is going to squeeze out. Apply it in whatever manner you want. Whether it be spreading it out or 
putting the little blob there. Let's go. And we're going to set our board in. All right, our final black machine thread screws in. We're going to go back to the Torx. These are going to go through metal into plastic, at least on this side. All right, with all of those screws in, let's take a look at our console. Okay. So this is the front. We had it laying this way with the back away from us. The next piece we can put in is... Really, we could do our hard drive, but we'll wait. We're going to go for our, let me see, our bottom piece. So, our bottom piece, that's the one that has the two tabs and this, the cutout for where the hard drive goes. And how this goes on is you're going to take it down past the front a little, clip it on there, make sure it slides on, hold, holding the back up, slides on nice and straight. And then when we get to the back here, this is where it will come up and clip into place. Now it's done. Let's take and flip over to our top. Now, how the top. It's going to go on. You want the side where you put your disc in and with the where the disc drive is, where you put the disc in and the fan, you're going to put that on and pull. Sorry. Put the back on where the ports are. Same thing. Once you get it lined up, you will push it. It it might want to catch. Let me show you on on its side. So you're gonna wanna catch this back part here and here you want that going over this part and then the same part on the other side lay it part way down but once you get it on those that's when it just want to snap down on the front so let's set it down and take a look at that again put it on pull it forward make sure it's nice and straight across the back And snap your PS4 Pro together. Now, for the last part, we have a few screws remaining. I'm going to do the hard drive almost last. And for the last trick of the day, let's go ahead and work on putting this in place. So, this goes in place by sliding this in this tab in over here and pressing it down it will latch in place there we are reassembled we're going to buff the top i'm not sure what this is if it's candle wax looks like somebody scribbled with something or from it sliding around we didn't do too much sliding here so it's definitely going to look good while it's shiny the candle wax i'm not going to worry about there you have it a freshly Tore down, completely cleaned out, and reassembled PS4 Pro. All right, let's turn on our repair. We're going to see if we can, in fact, send this out to OBS. And there we go. We'll plug it in. Give it a few seconds. We're going to get our PS4 controller. And indeed it did. There it is. However, I don't think HDCP is disabled on this. But it is sending it out. And my I need to get a new HDMI splitter. The one I have doesn't strip HDCP out, out of it. It just 
passes it right on through. It's a it's a one to four splitter. So yeah. And there we have it. PS4 Pro up and running. I disabled the uh, HDCP. What more is it? Anyhow, if uh, I'll flip over to this one, leave it up. If you dig this type of content, you know how how to do stuff uh, or basic, you know, repairing, learning something. Think about subscribing, giving a like, sharing it, or don't. You know, I do this just to show how basically anything was done. If you're the person who knows how to do this stuff and someone needs it done, give them a hand. Try to. You know, save this island Earth that we live on. All of us, along with Flat Earth Santa, you know, preserve it for a little while longer by keeping some of these older things out of the landfills and creating so much e-waste and everything else. Anyhow, that's it for this one. We are going to get ourselves out of here. Thank you so much for clicking the link and coming over anytime that anybody has. And yeah, have a good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Big announcement coming up. Three big announcements, actually. Stay tuned.